Hey folks, AshellThingsIntry.com. We're going to talk about lingual tori and crown lengthening of this uh, lower left, mandibular left uh, bicuspid. I know it's exciting, so hold on to your pants. Here we go. All right, so this is the this 39-year-old female uh, patient presents to the cl our cl perio clinic with a chief complaint of, I was referred here to get this tooth crown, whatever you guys call crown lengthening, I'm not sure, some sort of gum surgery. So... This tooth, tooth number 21, or FDI 3-4, was endodontically retreated approximately six weeks ago, and an amalgam restoration was placed on the coronal surface. The patient's medical history consists of no medications, no medical conditions, no allergies, no past surgical history, does not smoke, and does not drink. Super healthy, or so it appears on paper. And clinical exam, she had less than three millimeter probing around uh, around the entire circumference of uh, this premolar she had no bleeding on probing no bleeding on probing approximately three to four millimeters of attached gingiva and she had mandibular lingual tori so these are fairly and these are small to medium uh, on the left side and on her right side it was uh, maybe medium sized they were asymptomatic didn't think to cross my mind to ask her if they were symptomatic. They didn't bother. But we were going to take that in consideration during our crown length procedure to obtain the proper contouring. Now, I'd never uh, come across a patient when I had to do crown lengthening with uh, mandibular tori, so it's a, a new learning experience for me. So the idea, one of the things that when we're crown lengthening, especially in this case, I mean, it's really, it's, it's an really simple procedure to crown lengthen uh, especially when there's no restoration because you can see in approximately just get in there with your whatever instrument whatever instrumentation you like to use an end cutting burr uh, hand files uh, whatever it's so easy however one of the things to take into consideration is the feral effect so when the restorative doctor is going to restore this uh, premolar to have a predictable restoration um, Guidance has been shown in the literature as well that you need a ferrule, approximately 1.5 to 2 millimeters um, of that crown contacting natural tooth. So I'm going to assume that we're going to take this finish line, whatever if this is a finish line, and make take it, the restorative dentist is going to place it about 1.5 millimeters apical to this. So at this level where I'm making the assumption, I need to obtain my biological width, which is 3 millimeters between the osseous crest and the most apical portion of the finish line. In my experience, go more or go home, especially crown lengthening. Because there's nothing worse than not having sufficient biological width and trying to take an impression after you crown lengthen and you look like during the crown lengthening procedures like, yeah, that looks good. You measure around like, mm, patients, we've been here long enough. Um, all the things that say don't spend that extra three minutes doing a little more ostectomy guide you to okay well we'll just suture and we're done take that extra few minutes a little bit of pain up front pain in this sense is being timed that little bit of time up front will save you tons of time down the road especially trying to make a final impression and actually the uh, longevity of the restoration Okay, enough of that. So what we're going to do is, based on that, we're going to go 3 millimeters from where my uh, predicted finish line is going to be, 3 millimeters apically, and we're going to remove approximately 1 millimeter of gingival tissue all the way around the circumference of the tooth. Okay, so the, we elevated a few, full mucal periosteal flap from the mesial buccal line angle of this canine to the mesial, distal buccal line angle of the uh, tooth behind it, and on the facial, on the on the uh, lingual surface and here you can see it's elevated we've already completed this is fairly straightforward I don't want to talk about that the ostectomy and osteoplasty portion but on the lingual is where you can see I started I did, should have done this in the reverse remove the lingual tori but this gives you a good a good feel for how if you don't remove this lingual tori and you just do your crown length and you get this sort of concave sort of crater um, that doesn't really mimic kind of the standard osseous 
anatomy that you'd like. So you can see that this has, I do have three millimeters from, of the osseous crest, from the osseous crest to the uh, intended finish line. But in doing so, I created this nice little concave bowl. Uh, from now, what we're going to do is remove uh, that lingual tori. And sometimes you can use chisels, you can use burrs, whatever you like. In this case, we didn't have the chisel available, so we just use a burr, just a round burr, and uh, remove the uh, lingual tori. It was fairly quick. It happened, in a, it only took about two minutes. And here's the final contour. I think in reflection, I probably, no. You'll see when you suture, it actually looks a little bit uh, sunken in, but from here it looks like we have, uh, maybe we could actually remove some more. So we smoothed out the uh, osteoplasty, finished up all the re re remaining osteoplasty, uh, contouring of the uh, osseous architecture, and then sutured. So here is the, f the suture, we're using uh, 5 ohm Vicryl, and here you can see now that the, the flap was nicely out, uh, just placed against the, the architecture that is there now. We don't have that cratering effect and difficulty suturing if that was still there. So we didn't do the right side. The uh, patient was asymptomatic and she declined having the right side completed. Uh, so just food for thought when you're crown lengthening to take that in consideration. This is my first case requiring uh, lingual t mandibular lingual tori removal, uh, crown lengthening, because normally I'm crown lengthening just molars or anterior maxillary teeth, it seems. Hope that helps. Cheers.